Good evening, and thank you for joining us as we discuss the proposal to build a new BMC Durfee High School. My name is Will Richmond. I'm the Digital City Editor at the Herald News. I'm joined this evening by Paul Coogan, who is representing the new Durfee Ballot Action Committee, the group supporting passage of the March 6th ballot question, and Robert Kamara, who is re representing People for a Better Way, the group opposed to the ballot question. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you for having us. Tonight, both sides have been offered the opportunity to present opening and closing statements related to their position. In between, we'll have a conversation about the proposed project and the funding mechanism that goes before voters. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Fall River Community Media for co-sponsoring, hosting, and broadcasting tonight's forum. We'll move now to the opening statements. Each side will have three minutes. And first up, as determined by a coin flip, is Paul Coogan. Good evening. First, I would like to thank the Herald News, Bristol Community College, and everyone watching. I am firmly on the vote yes side for a new Durfee High School. I have known my friend on the no side, Chip Kamara, for a very long time. His son, Bobby, is still my doctor, and it is my hope that we'll have a spirited but very respectful discussion tonight. Albert Einstein once said, if you cannot explain it simply, you don't know it well enough. And that, that is how I have always operated to try to explain things in simple terms. The three main points I hope we discuss tonight cover most of this project. Need, alterations, and cost. Need. The no side would have you believe we are all in agreement on a new school. That's not true. I have heard about renovations, return to the old school, site issues, um, close it down, on and on and on. I recently heard the present Durfee was designed by architects who had never done a high school, and believe me, it shows. The building is crumbling, even after a new roof, technology, upgrades, and extensive renovations. The yes side is uniform, we need a new Durfee. Alternatives. In 2012, we had the Mount Vernon Group come out and do a complete estimate of renovations. A hundred and twelve million dollars later, that was our answer. The MSBA came down, walked the building with the estimate, and told us no money for renovations would ever be given to our project. We'll talk about that a little further later, I'm sure, too. Cost. The simple way to think about the cost is we are getting a $263 million high school for $98.5 million. Stay there for one moment. $98.5 million, we get a fully furnished, all-new, $263 million Durfee. At least 120 other cities and towns in Massachusetts asked for all or a part of our $165 million. And the city of Fall River is the one that won the money. The tax increase on a $212,000 home is about $9.58. If, if you want to have your children in a modern, secure learning center. Again, I think we'll talk about all these things later. Again, it is my belief that Chip and I can have an informative, civil discussion on some of these important issues. I get upset when I see the comments and swears and all kinds of other things on social me media, and maybe Chip and I can show how two different positions can debate an issue on merit. Again, thank you. Thank you, Paul. And next up is Robert Kamara. Thank you. Let me begin by thanking the Herald News and FRC Media for hosting this forum. This may be the most important vote the citizens of Fall River have ever taken. How this massive debt is funded will not only affect the building of the school, its financial burden will impact virtually every aspect of our daily life. Because the sheer enormity of this debt, the facts must be shared with the voters. First and foremost, this is a vote on how we fund the building of a school. It is not a referendum on education. We are in total agreement that we need a new Durfee. How we pay for it is the issue. And in spite of the assertions by the proponents of a debt exclusion, opposition to that funding is not somehow a vote against education. It is a stand against more taxes. The misinformation campaign for debt exclusion option is both well-funded and relentless. Statements that are presented as facts, such as if we reject the debt exclusion, we will lose MSB funding, are false. The actual fact is the MSBA does not require a debt exclusion. It requires only the full funding of the project. And I quote, 
A city, town, or regional school district must vote to appropriate and authorize the full amount of a project's cost, including both the local share and, and, and the MSBA share, if any. The total project budget amount must be authorized and approved, unquote. We can, in fact, receive funding as long as we fund the full amount of the project, regardless of the manner used to fund it. Tonight, I will show how a debt exclusion will impose a financial burden that will cause irreparable damage to families, businesses, property owners, and future financial growth. This year, we have seen an increased residential tax factor, another maximum increase under two and a half, increased fees, and new bonds. The addition of a debt inclusion to our present debt may very well fracture an already fragile economy. Our debt has become nearly unsustainable for the average citizen of Fall River. Our government must face the reality that we face every time we get a tax bill, a water sewer bill, or our rent or mortgage is due. The only fact that it should be considered when any form of override option is discussed is the economic impact to the community and individuals. This is not about a building. This is not about education. This is how we pay for a building. Thank you. Thank you. So as we get started, the goal for tonight is a conversation on this, on this issue. Responses won't be timed. And uh, we'll just con continue on as, uh, as we see fit. And I'll try to guide you through the, uh, the hour as best. Okay. So we'll start here. Um, we'll let you begin. Sure. Uh, earlier this week at a press conference in support of the project, Mayor Correa said the choice on March 6th to approve funding the new Durfee is a no-brainer. What do you think about that statement? Well, uh, before I do, can I ask for a point of first? Uh, Paul said it, and I have to say it. Paul and I are old friends. We, we've been friends for a long time. We have a different opinion. It will be nothing personal. Uh, we, we know uh, that we have, uh, you know, we have a differing opinion on this issue, but I think we both have education, and we, as he said, he knows my son, and I think that uh, we respect each other, and we can show that you can have a different opinion without uh, disrespecting the other individual. So. Yeah. Uh, as far as that's concerned, no, I'm sorry. It's not a no-brainer. It's not a no-brainer to the, it's not a no-brainer to the 60 60 percent of the Fall River Municipal retirees that I represent, who are living on below twenty-five thousand dollars a year. You know, and when they talk about the small impact, but that impact is compounded with, with all these other increases that I just covered in my opening statement. In addition to escalating costs for prescription drugs and, and, and for groceries and everything else. That's the problem. The problem is they have myopia. They're looking at the tree, not the forest. This bond affects people's lives, not only when they walk in that beautiful building, and I will say it's a beautiful building, but it affects the life. When a child walks in that building, he may walk into a beautiful building, but as we heard last night at the South End Youth Center, we're going to have people, when he goes home, they might not have an apartment. And I, Paul, would be much more knowledgeable of the fact, but we have a very high percentage of our children right now in the, in the school lunch program. This city is not an economic powerhouse, and we all know it. We know that we have the lowest average income in the state, and the reality is it is not a no-brainer to people who are living on the, you know, on the verge of losing their houses and on the verge of they have to pay. It's not only this. There are, there are many, many other factors. Paul, what do you think well, about the no-brainer comment? Well, on the basis of building a new high school, I think it is a no-brainer. Um, I'm glad Chip brought up the fact that we're on a, on a bad economic level for income and, um, and cost of living and all these things going up. But at the same time, how do you change a city? How do you change a city that's running at one of the lowest residential tax rates in the area? And I got that off of one of uh, Chip's supporters' websites. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, how do you make it better? You make it better with good schools, public safety, clean streets. Look at, look at what we have in Fall River. They've built a number of elementary schools that are really show places that will go anywhere in the state. You have Viveris, you have Fonzica, you have Green. These are beautiful, beautiful schools, and I wish more of the public got into them. You look at our, a couple of our uh, middle schools. You look at Morton and Cuss. These were all buildings built with the help of MSBA. And for the size and scope of the Durfee Project, which is five, four or five times the size of one of our biggest elementary schools, Viveris, they're giving us $163 million. So 
Either we take advantage of this now, or we go back into the line and wait another five or eight years down the road when the costs are gonna go up exponentially, and we're in a real problem. The city of Fall River right now needs to change its mindset. We have got to improve the quality of life for everyone in the city. And a good school, a good Durfee High School is part of that mix. We're working on our elementary schools, we're working on our middle schools, we're working on Durfee, we have this beautiful campus here at Bristol Community College, and we have UMass Dartmouth. How do you keep saying we have the lowest cost of living, this and that, unless you move to change it? If you wanna sit still, we can sink further and further down, but it's my position that when a city starts to flip like Boston did, or Providence, or even the waterfront in New Bedford, you have to move things forward with jobs, good schools, public safety, and a clean environment for the citizens. Well, you know, obviously, I, I respectfully disagree, and and the the actually the facts uh, bear it out. Number one, the first first myth I'd like to think is our tax rate. Uh, the tax rate, number one, if you look at Newton, one of the highest, uh, the number one city in the in, in the in the in the state, they have a tax rate of ten dollars. Cambridge, the second, has a tax rate of six dollars. Um, but let's look at the let's look at Newton. I mean, I'm sorry, Newton Lowell, which is a very close situation. This is the problem. You know, we think that, you know, unfortunately, look, a building is great, but it's not the panacea. We we have uh, Newton. I mean, it's not Newton, I keep saying Newton Lowell. Lowell has basically 110,000 people. But we look, we're talking about education. Our problem isn't education. Our problem is keeping people in Fall River. And the growth rate for Lowell was 7.3%. They went from 106,000 to 110. The growth rate for Newton was 5.3%. Uh, they went from uh, 80, 85 to 88. Fall River's growth rate was one-tenth of a percent. One-tenth. Why? People are not coming here. And then if you look at the degrees, Newton, which is fundamentally economically pretty close, even though we have one of the lowest per capita at 22.154, theirs is a 22 something. They're close, but then we look at the degrees. People with people with bachelor's degrees, they have twice as much as we do. Newton has the most, obviously, but we're educating children and they're leaving the city. Our our problem is far greater than just the. Building a building a school is going to create. Granted, we all want a school, but the fact is that we have a we have a city, and look at our growth rate. You think if we if we if if we drive out the few people who are left that are on the fringe, that they're going to be replaced? The facts do not bear that out. Well, our growth rate is below one percent. It's a tenth of a percent, and these are not my statistics. These are the United States Census Bureau statistics. So I, I just, you know, I disagree. We have to look at a, a, we, you know, it's just like everything else. We have to look at a complete picture. We have to look at things, and education is a tremendous part of that. I mean, Germany's been doing, been doing vocational training and apprenticeship programs for 50 years. It's great. But one of our problems is keeping our, our children in this community. Because you're not going to tell me that the pe that people we graduate don't, don't get it. We have a lot of people that get educations. But... 90% of them move out of the city. That's why we only we only have a 14% rate of people with a baccalaureate or more in this community. You know, they don't stay here. So it's more than just the school. We've got to we've got to do something more on many other fronts to keep people here. Oh. And oh. I do I think I think hearkening back to what um, Chip said, I don't think anybody's going to confuse Newton with Fall River. Uh, we're a gateway city. I don't even believe they're in the same demographic statistics as us. But as I said, on February 3rd, one of what I thought was one of the no uh, supporters posting said Fall River has some of the lowest property tax rates in the state. Um, just look in our area. Freetown, an average tax bill of 3791 Dartmouth, 3578. Swansea, 3530. Taunton, 3569. New Bedford, our closest competitor, 3128, and we're at 2835. And this information is coming off one of the no side supporters. My position is you can't just say we have bad problems, bad problems, bad problems. We all know that. Fall River needs to change. And how do you do that? 
you have good public safety, you have clean streets, you have an excellent school system, you piggyback into places like Bristol Community College and UMass Dartmouth, you expand our vocational offerings at Diamond, you look at Bristol Aggie, you bring all these schools together, you get a strong base, you draw people back to the city, you bring jobs in, Meditech, Amazon, those are all working in our favor and we have to praise these things and make the city a better place. We can't just say, oh, we're low, we're this, we're that. How will it ever change? Then are we trying to go lower or are we trying to improve? And you improve through education, public safety, and jobs. Now, as you both have talked about tax rates here, um, one of the sort of funding mechanisms that has been brought up to help alleviate some of these uh, expenses on taxpayers is the idea that in about eight years, as other bond expenses come out of the operating budget, the Durfee expenses could replace that and the operating budget could sort of fold in these costs. And Paul, I'll start with you on this. Do you see that as a viable um, plan moving forward as a, as a way to promote this project or the promote the funding? And what kind of commitments do you think need to be made from, fut you know, from whoever may right. be serving the future, uh, the city in the future to make that happen? Well, well let's look at that. Uh, Mary Sahadi, who I don't know, uh, Chip's relationship with her. Um, I've known her for also a long time, like Chip. She's, she's extremely sharp. She's looked at the debt that could be coming off potentially by 2030, and she's looked at the increase in taxes that may come along. They're going to go up, as Chip just said, whether it's on this debt exclusion or on the two and a halfs um, by then, and she thinks she can melt that debt back into the straight tax and take it off of uh, real estate bills. Um, that would I would support that 100 percent but as I said last night Chip and I uh, had the pleasure of joining the Maplewood uh, Association I believe that this tax doesn't even go into effect until 2022 so it's my position that anybody who looks at this as a, a very big negative for the city they don't want to take the MSBA money they don't want to pay the debt override they should literally I, I said it last night run for mayor make their position known and in 2020 Hopefully they get enough votes to, to use their alternative plans to fund the school. If that works, which is, maybe I'll run because Chip has asked me to a couple of times. <laughs> um, but no, but, but that's how I look at it. We don't know what's going to happen four years down the road. Mary's given us an estimate on eight. I trust Mary. I believe she's looked at the numbers a hell of a lot more than either of us, although I, I speak mostly for myself because I am not good with numbers. But I think we could do that. And I would love to see that happen. I'd love to see the bill go away in eight, eight years but will depend on the good guidance in the uh, city's financial division. Uh, what do you hear from retirees? Is eight years too long for them? Uh, well, you know, eight days is too long for some of these. As I said, 60% of the retirees, municipal retirees, uh, have, make less than $25,000 a year. Do the math. They, they've just incurred 70 drugs that went up in tears. Um, their their health care is going up. Uh, everything is going up. Their groceries. And we also have a very high population of Social Security, making very meager. And this is the thing. They always talk about, you know, and they, you know, Swansea, small towns. But look, let's, it's not, a, it's not a mistake that most of the communities that are in the worst financial shape have the higher taxes. Fall River, you have to take the ratio of the tax to the income. Because let, how, can you, how can you justify Newton has a, a $10 tax rate? And, and Cambridge has a $6 tax rate. Very simply, what does Newton have that we don't have? 10,000 more businesses and 70.1% 70, 70 of the people own their own property. We have 35.1% of the people that own property, many of them elderly and on fixed incomes. And we have 10,000 less businesses. So when you look at, the, you look at the, their ability to get funds and draw people, we can all remember an old Fall River when everybody wasn't rich, but everybody had a job. When Pleasant Street was full, when, when South Main Street had stores, every store. And what was the common denominator? The economy. They, didn't ha they weren't highly educated, but people had money. The reality is in a small community like this, or any community, anybody you talk to, Milton Friedman said, taxes are regressive, an economic, a, a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, Winston Churchill, uh, if you think you can tax your way out of, into prosperity, it's like standing in a bucket and trying to pull it up by the handles. And then, of course, Milton Friedman made my favorite quote. 
And this is, another, this is another thing. They want more money in addition to our tax levy. If you give the government the Sahara Desert, they'll run out of sand in five years. And this is what they're doing. We are, and they said at a council meeting that we could do this within the current le levy. It would be tight. But guess what? Most of the people in Fall River are on pretty tight budgets. All I'm asking our government to do is do the same thing that we do. Understand where Chip's coming from, but I don't think for a minute he wants to tell us that the tax rates in Newton and Cambridge are low because the house values are worth a heck of a lot more in Fall River. A hundred thousand dollar house in uh, Newton is probably two fifty. I mean, you, you're that close to Boston. Cambridge is an uh, an educational fire center. I mean, everything is moving, 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 and I believe I know what the houses go because my girlfriend and now my wife used to live in Cambridge and they were through the roof back 30 years ago so house values in those communities is extremely high they could probably do a lower tax rate than that because you, you, you're taxing on houses that are worth eight hundred thousand dollars a million dollars in Fall River we can't chip is right you can't tax your way out of prosperity but you can tax things to fix a city whether it was when chip was a fire chief or a head of the union we had to pay taxes to support him and his men. Chief uh, Dupere was there last night for police. We have to pay taxes to support them. We have to support the streets. We have to support the schools. The schools are the flip agent in this argument. If you have a lousy school system, which the superintendent we have in there now is working 24-7 to flip it, it needs work. Anybody who wants to not concede that is not being truthful. Our school system needs work. But how do you do it in a building that is crumbling down the street? I'll give you a little example of how bad that building is. Try him, because I know Chip's concerned about safety in the building. They were trying to install a small camera over one of the exit doors the other day. They couldn't even drill into the siding because it was crumbling from a drill bit. How do you fix that? And that's not that spot. That's all the siding. It's, it's long... It's fine if you don't touch it, just like a wall in a house sometimes. But once you try to do something with it, you open up a can of worms. We want to fix this school. We want to make it a key component in the progress of the city of Fall River. And we want to do it with this MSBA money and this uh, tax proposal to the city. Well, then let's get back to, to Newton again. Yeah, the, the houses are worth a lot more. But as I said, we have to look at this. It's always easy to talk about, you know, our tax rate, it's $2 less. But the fact is, if your house is worth three times more in Newton, it's a lot easier to pay when you've got a $127,000 average income versus a $34,000 income. And at worst, we're even, and we shouldn't be even. But the, but the impact and, the, and, the, and our economic viability is based on maintaining some kind of coherence with our, with our, with our population. And we look at it, we're not growing, and we're not going to turn the growth around in, 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 the, in the distant future. One-tenth of a percent is deplorable, the growth, okay? So what do we have to do? We've got to try to keep at least the people that are in the city here, and if we tax them out of their apartments, and remember, this is, a, as I said, this, we're not living in a vacuum. W what does this affect? It, it affects people's entire lives. Now, now, you know, I mean, we've gotten astronomical water bills. I've got people telling me they're paying twice as much as they used to. Now, now somebody that's living in an apartment now is going to get, can't pay their rent. Can't, and we, we know what happens. They're going to get evicted. Then, then, then landlords are going to have problems. And it's not going to help the system. The thing is that, look, we have to pay for school. We agree with the school. The fact is that what really disturbs me is that we haven't had a dialogue on any other option. It's been absolutely closed. Everybody tells us what a great deal we have, and they tell us, and the city presented their figures, and I want to show you this. Well, well that's, that, okay. that's a good place to go. That was going to be my next question right. anyways. Uh, you've got it right in front of you, the pro-con statement. Yep. The con statement mentions that uh, the process failed to consider any other options for paying for the project. Exactly. So what do you think some of those other options could or should be? Well, as I, as I said in my opening statement, uh, one of the options is to, is to um, rein in spending. And I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at, number one, I'm looking at our city, and we have to be proportionate. Now, we look at our financial team. They just got $73,500 $73, in pay raises. 
$40,000 pay raise. There are people that have been working for the city of Fall River for 25 years they are not making $40,000 annually. We have people working in a cafeteria making $16,000 a year. But we have to control our spending. I want everybody to be paid a wage, but I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I negotiated with this city for 24 years. And when I walked into that negotiation and I tried to get paid like Newton, they laughed me out of the room. I had to try to barely make as much as New Bedford and other cities that are down, Lowell, Lawrence, Fall River. The thing is, but we pay our administrators. We have to control spending it, because let's face it, and they say, well, they should be paid compared. Well, so should everybody. But guess what? The rents in Fall River, the average median rent is 700 and change. The average median rent in Newton is 1700 So you have to be paid more to live in Newton. You have to be paid more to be living. Living. You know, I remember when I was negotiating a contract one time, and I was looking up facts throughout the, the, the country, a trash picker in San Francisco was making more than anybody in the city of Fall River, mayor, department head, or anything. It's apples and oranges. Obviously, this is capitalism. What the market will bear. You're paid. You, we all know how much Boston apartments are. But then again, about on that subject, financial disclosure. You saw, you, I, I'm sure you have a copy of the city's presentation. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. This is the presentation and it's current. There's, I don't know if the camera's on because we're not on, but here it is and you can look at it, Will. Finance Committee presentation to the Board of Selectmen FY 2019 debt exclusion discussion, January 29th, 2018. Now, this is about a... What town is this for? Are you Wayland. Okay. Okay, town of Wayland. But I'm not talking about... We're not you're making wage comparisons, size comparisons, or economic comparisons. What we're making here is the comparison of the information that... that the, not only the council and selectmen or whatever got, as opposed to ours. This is, I, I've only got the front, you can, you can look it up. It's, it's about 43 pages, but this is what, it, this is what it, it talks about. Situation summary, process and proposition, project impact, right, project analysis, Q&A, and then I'll go, I'll quickly go to page 15 with something we never got, pros and cons of requiring an override. Now the first pro is override de decisions are decided at the polls where they can be uh, greater and more convenient participation. The reality is you can't make a you can't make an accurate decision without full information. When you look at this when you look at this presentation and I did bar graphs everything specific to the point where the cons it creates inflexibility in budgeting and not something we've never heard of that that has another effect of this bond override. It has a negative effect on the Moody's rating. That means once we take this, every other bond we're going to get, and we know we're going to bond in the future because they're coming, we're going we're gonna to not get as good a deal, so we're going to lose money on the bond rating. And then I go to the next right, one. Well, let's let Paul. Well, let me just get one more. You're up here, so let, okay. let Paul kind of, I know he wants to respond. Yeah, I would to like to respond because I, I, he's going so far afield. I didn't know we yeah. were in Wayland. Now okay. we're heading for No, no, it's not Wayland. Brockton. It's about information. Okay, but I know where we were. In, it uh, happens to be in Wayland. Okay. That's all. All right. But okay. let's, let's face it, folks. No, 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 no is not a plan. I, and, and again, rain and spending is not a plan. Do, is Chip telling us where he's going to make these cuts to fund this thing? That's what that's what a plan is. That's what I'm hoping comes forward. People say, Chip says, let's cut public safety by 25%. Let's cut school spending by, that's a plan. Oh. What he's doing is talking about Waylon and Newton. My position is very, very clear. I wanted him very desperately to lay out a specific plan about where we were going with this school funding. How, where, when. Our plan is laid out. People understand that that $165 million didn't drop out of the clouds. A ton of work went into um, obtaining that grant from the state. That is money that they have committed to the city of Fall River. It's going to be an economic engine even while we're building um, the building. I At my first... Uh, building committee meeting, I, I explored and I talked to one of the people uh, responsible for bring, making sure the laborers, I want people from Fall River working on that school. I would love to have a set percentage, but I'm here and I could be in a bad uh, way trying to do that, but I want people from Fall River getting the benefit of that construction in Fall River. I want 
the, the policemen getting overtime when they need it to do the construction in Fall River. I want fire safety people helping with the building in the construction in Fall River. I want to keep as much of that $263 million in Fall River. This is a tremendous economic engine for the city. He talked about some raises that I, I don't really know what $73,000 is going to get you in a, um, in a $263 million project, but it is a starting point. And uh, my position is if he lays out the things he wants to cut tonight, where he's looking for money, where he wants to raise taxes, I can assure you, no one chip, he was a diligent union president. He never went to the city once and said, please lower the taxes so my men can have a raise. I will guarantee you he didn't say that. I know how he was. He was a hard bargainer, and he wanted to do the best for his men. But he never opened up with, can you please lower the taxes so my men can get a raise? It doesn't work that way. You need revenue to pay Chip, me, and anybody else that worked in the public sector. So there's nothing, there's nothing hiding. It's the way it works. Well, we are hiding a lot. The fact is that, you know, that I did, I did go to the, I did bargain with the city, and I bargained hard, but the fact was, we did, we did an exhaustive investigation into the financial ability of the city to pay. We can't do that now because this is what we got. And as I said, you want me to give you a plan, make a budget when I don't know reality. But I'll tell you where we can start. The fact that Mary Sahadi, who you just talked about, who's sharp. Um, no, you think she's sharp. You think she's no, no, sharp. no. I, no. Well, I, you know, I may disagree with her on that. All right, I mean, all right. That's she, fair. You know, that's she, fair. she made a lot of errors. I'll tell you, when we sued no. the city in 91, they screwed up that audit. She well, let's, keep, let's keep so, it focused okay, on okay, that. Right, right, no, but no. I'm just saying. Okay, don't, okay, you know, okay. you know, my, my assessment of, you know, she doesn't work for Ernst & Young. <laughs> but the fact is, you, I can't create a budget or, or come up with a, a man until I get full disclosure of everything. And this is the point. The point is, Mary Sahadi herself said that we could do this without the override. This is about additional taxes in addition to two and a half and all the other fees and taxes. This is the Amherst study. Okay, this is about 53 pages, but this is what it's got. It's got explanations, in, number one, so we don't have to try to figure out what the difference is between a, a debt exclusion and an override and a tax levy. It explains everything. Then it has lists of figures, the calculations of property tax levy, override exclusions. It's got page upon page upon page of explanations. Why? These are, the, these are comprehensive financial explanations of the city and its ability to pay and where all the money is. Maybe if I was in Amherst or Wayland, I could come up with some some things. Right now, we have virtually no information, and that information is not totally accurate anyway because we keep talking about 98.5, and it's not because I don't care where you go. You know, you're paying a bill, and you got to pay the interest. Nobody pays principal without paying the interest. And I know that Paul keeps saying nobody cares about the interest, no, but guess no, what? I did not say well, that. You no, well, I did not well, say well, that. Well, you said something to that effect. I did explain pays it. Attention no, to I did not. Well, you can explain I it. I'm sorry. I explain if it. I misinterpreted it, No, I did not it, say I nobody cares. That's you, yeah. not, well, I bought stuff on interest. I know yeah. what it's worth. <laughs> well, but you kind of said that, well, you know, we picked yesterday, but we're not going to go over okay. that. But the fact is that, look, this is, not a, this is not my individual account. When I walk in to a place... I can say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay this car off in two years because I don't want to pay a ton of interest. If I don't have money, I have to make something that's going to affect my budget for the next six years. I'm going to buy a car. But this is a city. We're dealing with a budget that impacts every single person in the city, and we are entitled to know the full cost of something. Don't stick out a figure of 98 million when it's actually by their own figures 181 million with interest. We have to know because you know they say, oh, you don't have to know. All you got to do is worry about what it, what's in your tax rate. Let's look at this objectively. We got a 30 year we got a 30 year bond. The building's only good for 40 or 50. So this isn't temporary. We're going to be bonding forever. This school is going to be a gem. But the fact is, in 40 years, it won't be up to code. It will, it will need repairs, and we'll be looking to build another school. The days of building schools that lasted 100 years like we did in the old days, like fire stations, are long gone. But the reality is to say that we need a plan, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, I could probably give you a plan 
much easier for Amherst or Whalen than I can for Fall River with the limited information and, and the inaccurate information we've gotten so far. Well, that's Paul. fair enough. Um, I, but as I said, I would have loved to seen him talk about even some generalities of places where he thinks money could be found to pay for this. I will uh, if you let me. Well, go ahead. Let me. I think we're being fair with the no, time. Go ahead. No, absolutely. No. Okay. no, go ahead. I'll do it later. I, I, uh, no, go ahead. I would love to bring up... Um, what, what is happening in, in education in the, in the state of Massachusetts. Um, Fall River is part of a compact. Our kids go to Diamond, Bristol Aggie, Durfee, when they hit the high school years. Right now, we're obviously sending, I think it's 56 kids to Bristol Aggie, and there's like seven or 800 at uh, Diamond, I believe. I used to be on the school committee there, but I don't have the number right now. If you wanna put the costs into perspective for where we're going, I've heard people say this is a Taj Mahal. Bristol Ag Aggie recently was awarded a grant from the MSBA for they, they're going to do renovations, renovations and one new building for a hundred and four million dollars. Let that number set for a minute. One hundred and four million dollars. We asked for one hundred and twelve to do renovations at Durfee for twenty three hundred kids, and we were told we won't give you a penny. MSBA is given Bristol Aggie about half of the 104. They have 450 students at Bristol Aggie. That comes out to $23,100 per pupil. Our $263 million project in Fall River for 2,300 kids is $11,000. So for renovations and a new building, they're getting $23,000 a kid at Bristol Aggie for a brand new building in Fall River, we're getting $11,000 per pupil. It's not even close. My position is that this, this proposal is cost effective and very prudent on the taxpayers. I know Chip does not want to pay an extra cent. I'm with him there, but I don't have a problem paying in increased taxes if it pays for Chip's firemen. I don't have a problem paying increased taxes if it pays for public safety. I don't have a problem paying increased taxes if it pays for schools. When I can't afford it, then I'm going to do what I have to do and change my living arrangements. But right now, I support Chip and his firemen, and I support the schools. Well, it's in some of the funding here, as you, as you discussed, um, the MSBA and the amount there, they'll be kicking in the roughly $167 million. Um, is that money too good to give up? Well, that's the other thing. Um, you know, we're not, we don't have to give it up. Uh, if, you, if you look at this article from the Lowell Sun-Times, Lowell, Lowell, the MSVA itself delayed the process for Lowell uh, because, to, and, it, and you can read the headline, uh, to pr uh, voted to protect taxpayers. There's absolutely no reason why, we're not gonna lose this, but they keep, you know, saying that we're gonna lose this. Well, yeah, maybe if we never discuss it, maybe if we say we don't do the override, we take Mary Sahadi's word that we, do, we can do it, but the budget might be tight, and we might let the people agree that, hey, let's not add MOA to a, already a, 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 an overburdened system, and, we can, and we're not gonna lose this. That, that's the thing. It, everything in Fall River is always 11th hour. If we don't do this, we're gonna get, we're gonna get the, you know, the EPA is gonna come down and fine us. And to get back to the, the point about Paul, right, beautiful building and stuff, but the reality is, and we talked about education, and he knows I'm a proponent of education. Both, both my kids went to Durfee. Uh, they were both National Honor Society. They, they went on to get degrees, and, and I went to Durfee, Paul went to Durfee. Um, you know, and I am pro-education. I am not pro-spending money. But the reality is that this, this implication that, you know, uh, that, you know, we're talking about education. We're talking about how we fund the building. The reality is, and, and Paul can correct me if I'm wrong, because Paul's been a professional educator for, for, for his whole life, and, and I respect that. You know, he, he does that. But Education is not based on the building. It's based on maximizing learning time for the students. The city has reduced the number and out or outsourced paraprofessionals that reduce learning time in the classroom. So when I look at expenditures for education, that's the physical plant. 
and no one is going to say they don't need I want I want the people in this city to have and I want the students and if it was a fire station or a police station or a new city hall I would want the best we could possibly do with one caveat the best we could do that we can afford and that this city can afford without doing more damage to the people and the, the, the reality is that education is about learning time there are issues and even that I talked about the impact beyond the school level when you walk out and your, your mother can't pay rent but Paul will tell you don't didn't you used to have outreach programs that extended beyond uh, that be uh, beyond school hours in order to reach and you were a, you yeah, were a, you yeah. were a uh, counselor yeah, right yeah, absolutely. so you were probably intimately involved still with these programs that. yeah so see this is the thing it the school it's not just in the school when they leave the school not they leave the school and they can't pay the rent and the mother can't buy them food well you know there are, there is a it's not a, it's not as simple it's not a simple build this and it's it's like mm. that movie build it and they will come build it it's not going to Okay. Cure all our problems. Okay, I, I, and and I, I do agree with a lot of the things Ch Ch Chip just said, but build it when it's falling down. The, my position on Durfee is, let's build it now with the grant from the state, and again, if someone in the next four years finds a better way to fund it, decides to fold it into the debt, have at it. But right now, this is what's in front of us. We can vote no and tell the state we have 120 days from February 14th to come up with a plan to get that money from the state. If we don't, they take us out of the loop. They did that to Lincoln when Lincoln voted it down. Chip was there last night when one of the other presenters talked about that. Lincoln voted down the proposal for a new high school. They went out of the loop. They're still trying to get back in. They still have to build a new school. I think it's up, they were like looking for 50 million, it's up to 85 million, and they're not getting a cent from MSBA for it. So they put themselves into a box and they ruined their opportunity. My position is going forward with this right now, with a yes vote on March 6th, gives us the time to move forward. If Chip is correct and he's, his crew gets together and over the next four years decide this is a better way to do it and they present it, I hope it has credence. I'm not against it. But right now this plan is the one that's on the table and a vote yes on March 6th will get us moving. Chip's got a better plan. I'm still waiting to hear it, where they're going to well, find that money, and I'll we, go with them. Here we go. Well, I'll, we'll find the money. You get, let, me, let me get my accountants from Ernst & Young in there. We'll find the money. And Mary Sahadi's already said we got the money, so it's only a, a question of it. But, you know, again, again, this, 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 this assertion that somehow it's gone, like Lincoln. Well, we got Lincoln, I got Lowell. Lowell's still in the loop. They delayed it. It's still in the loop. Here's the Lowell Sun-Times. They're still in the loop. What, what prevents us from saying no and having our city council turning around and say, no, we're going we're gonna to find the money, we're going we're gonna to commission. If, if our financial team can't do it, we're going to get the people that did it in Amherst to find a way, and then we can reach out, because we've reached out. They reached out. MSBA did it. We can reach out and tell them, look, how many times has our accreditation been in jeopardy and you negotiated extra time? We, you know, there's no, and I'm a negotiator. I negotiated a lot of contracts. You're not going to tell me we can't negotiate w with the MSBA because Lowell did it. And, and there's no reason why we can't, you know, have some time to look at another funding source. Okay. Well, if, I, if I understand this correctly, and I'll, Paul, I'll let you respond. Um, there's a 120-day clock that begins with the vote that put February it on the ballot, yep. right, February 14th, or the, the vote by started. the MSBA to approve the funding. So with the March 6th vote, that does, if it is rejected, that does leave some time potentially for um, another funding proposal to be discussed before the MSBA could pull the plug on the funding. Um, so, I mean, what what concerns or, or does that raise on your end well, uh, well, to kind of open up the calendar? Like well, that? my concern is that if we vote no, and we don't get it done. That's an if. What you're saying is if we vote no, we may be able to, we, we may be, I, I, I got to go back to Lowell, though. I, I, I think I read that article. Wasn't Lowell not even set on a site yet, though? I thought there was a, a big fight going on about out oh, of yeah, the field. Oh, yeah, fight. Okay, yeah. so they're not even the set on a site. The state, the MSBA may have given them um, extra time because there was a problem over even where to locate the school. We have the location. Free 63 acres of land right down the street. We're not in this, Lowell had not settled on a site. So they're, they're asking the MSBA to balance everything off and they're saying, where are you gonna put it? Where are you gonna put it? And the town is still in an uproar about where to locate 
the school. So MSB a realizes they're not ready. We're ready. Yeah. We just have to get a yes vote on March 6th. I, I want to talk about this as an investment in the city. Um, one of the claims that has come up from some people in this process is that the city, the school system, students don't deserve this building because they won't treat it with respect. Mm -hmm. Students will simply destroy the building. W what do you guys think about those, cl those claims that come from some people? Well, uh, you know, l let me, you know, <laughs> Paul and I are going to be in agreement on this one. Okay. You know, so. uh, I you hope know, so. The re yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> look, the reality is, look, um, to me, that's not a that's not a plausible argument. The okay. fact is that our students uh, deserve the best environment that they can be in. That's that's you know, and obviously we can argue. Paul and I, as I said, it's not. An, we'll argue over the funding. We'll argue over whether we can get we can get an extension. And as you said yourself, we might have time within there to get something done. But the fact is, we're not going to argue about the fact that I, I believe that our city should have the best fire stations, the best police stations, and the best schools we can possibly build them. Because, you know, look, there are going to be children, there are going to be problems, but, you know, Paul can speak more to that because he handled disciplinary problems and stuff in the schools. But I, I don't think the fact that somebody, you know, may vandalize something for a minute, we have to take away from the 90% of the children who are, who are actually who are actually doing the right thing. Yeah. So I, 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 I'll echo exactly what Chip just said. Um, you look at the new schools. I, I'm in them. I make it a point in my job on the uh, school committee to visit all the schools two or three times a year and do a complete walkthrough as much as I can. I love seeing the kids in the class. And you go to Morton. I saw a broken door. I went back. That's fixed. I've seen windows broken. They're fixed. Things happen. You can't have 10,000 young people running around a city that don't make mistakes. I made them. I don't want to speak for Chip, but he might have made some too. <laughs> but my position yeah, is, well. you don't say, stick them in there, it's good enough. No. If we have an opportunity to do this project, I would love to see a school that parents want to send their children to. The parents moved to Fall River because look at that school. It's right down the street from Bristol Community College. They have an AP program connected to Bristol Community College where the kids can walk up the street for their afternoon classes. There are potential benefits of having a beautiful school to send kids to, and I don't favor that argument about they're going to wreck it. I'm in 100% agreement with Chip on that. Let's give the kids something they can be proud of. All right. Uh, we have a couple minutes left, so we'll take some, we'll go some quicker answers on these. Uh, if the city votes yes, Bob, what do you, what do you and your group do next? Well, we're going to have to sit down and uh, we're going to have to sit down and consider things. We we also have another issue that hasn't even been talked about: the, the, our city charter. A city charter basically says that you, we need a 20% turnout for anything to be on a, on a referendum. So uh, they're saying that it's waivable, but I'm not sure if a charter is, is discretionary. The last time I checked, it was the rule. It was the rule of law for our city. It's our constitution fundamentally. So there are questions like that, and I'm concerned that, and I'm, I hope Paul will agree, I'd like to see 100% turnout. You know, because well, we want to see as many people to turn out so it's going to be an accurate representation of the way people feel. So uh, there are issues, uh, you know, about this that uh, I don't know where we're going to go. You know, we're going to have to we're going to have to deal with a charter issue. We're going to have to deal with uh, with with many issues. So uh, well, if the vote is no we'll, on your end, what, what do you think comes next from uh, then on March 7th? We go back to work. But on March 7th, we'll have a yes vote and we'll proceed with our plan from the MSBA and the uh, city of Fall River. I strongly believe Again, I get out and about a lot. I'm kind of a gadfly type person. I talk to a lot of people, as is Chip. Uh, we get around. I, I'm getting the flavor that we're we're gonna that the city is gonna rally behind a new Durfee. Let's give the kids something they can be proud of. And I'm hoping by March 7th we have a yes vote. Um, all in all, this has been roughly a four-year process, um, five-year process. Okay. So, uh, do you think the process has been open enough? Paul, well, I'll start with you. It seems like this has gained a lot of attention right. since it reached the city council. Well, I, I, um, I'm a late ad addition to the, uh, the the building committee because Eddie Costa um, didn't run for re-election, so they put me on because I was also a the school committee the Durfee, yeah. correct. Um, but I believe they've had a number. I've gone to a number of uh, public forums. There's another one coming up the 28th where people go and talk about what's going on in school, what are they going to do. They're... Uh, they're always showing pictures. They're always looking for input. Uh, one of the things we all kind of uh, 
were adamant about that uh, former Durfee people, I'll bet your tip is too, that we had a tilt on the roof. I mean, <laughs> that, that flat roof was a tough thing to deal with, but everybody, it was like we were all in there on a unisons, tilt that roof, tilt the roof, so I think we're having a tilted roof. But you do have input, and the public forum is another place to go. Um, it's explained, and they let people get up and talk about their concerns. I believe it's been plenty open enough. I've seen a lot of the public come to the first few meetings we had as a building committee, and uh, we sit around a table, and it's just like a city council meeting or a school committee meeting. People come and listen. Well, uh, I agree to, to, to an extent. Um, I, I, believe that, uh, I believe that the committee didn't have enough representation from w what I would consider the general population. I was on the Education 2000 Committee that, that got the 10 schools that we built at, as part of the Fall River Regional Task Force. And that took a, quite a long time. And not that time involved really results in a great product because I think the this Durfee was 13 years in the making, <laughs> I think, from the first from the, the, from the, from the first foray into the, the final stages, I think it was almost 13 years. But I don't, I'm not necessarily advocating a 13 year process. I think the process was okay. If I had to say one thing, I would say there, there weren't enough people uh, from what I would consider just the, you know, the regular population, and I'm not sure how actively they recruited it. But all in all, I, you know, I think the people had ample time, they had public forums, and I think it wasn't a, you know, I, I don't think it was, because this is, you know, and we all know we've been around, you know, we all get the, we always get the complaints at the, at the end. Mm -hmm. right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Thank you, Chip. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we're just about at the end of, t end of tonight's forum, so we'll shift to the closing statements, and uh, first up, again, as determined by the coin flip, will be uh, Paul Camara. Thank you, I appreciate it, Will. Uh, let me begin by again thanking the Herald News and FRC Media for providing our group with the opportunity to frame our position on a debt exclusion option. And make no mistake, it is an option. As hard as our opponents try to make it seem it's our only option, it is not. We can, as voters, taxpayers, renters, businessmen, and citizens of Fall River, say no to more taxes. No to watching huge pay raises and new positions being created while we are asked to be the ATM machine for uncontrolled spending. We can say yes, we want a new school, but only when every option has been examined. Only when we are sure our government has learned to stay within its budget, just like you and I have to do. We don't get to eat steak every day because we can't get our neighbors to give us their money for our budget. So we must send a clear message to our city council and our mayor by voting no on March 6th, by telling them to find the money within our present tax levy, by telling them to reach out to the MSBA and tell them we fully intend to build this school and will fund it. The MSBA delayed the process in Lowell to protect, to protect taxpayers, and they can delay it here to protect us. And who knows? When we finally look at all our options and get a full financial analysis, we may save money. A no vote will allow both sides of this question of how to pay for this school to unite in a common cause, to build a new school, and build it in a way that protects the taxpayers, renters, and citizens of Fall River. Let's send a clear message. Yes, we want a school, so find the money in our budget, just like we have to as taxpayers every day, every week, and every month. No new taxes, enough is enough. Thank you, and vote no on March 6th. Thank you, Paul. Um, it's a privilege for me to be here tonight and support the yes vote side. I wanna thank all of those people involved, even Chip for having the gracious attitude and joining me here tonight, I really appreciate it. When we look at all the factors that go into building a new Durfee, location, design, the $165 million MSB grant, it looks to me like something we should do. But some people are concerned about the taxes, the debt exclusion, cost overruns. Will it be taken care of after we build it? Many, many valid concerns. The city administration has decided to pursue this path of action to get it done. We all know the people who speak at public input, who post all over social media, the self-appointed city watchdogs, what is their plan and what do they want to do? 
How do you change culture of a city? Remember, we are buying a $263 million high school for $98.5 million. It would be like Chip and I going down to Walmart and buying $100 worth of groceries for 37 bucks. Because someone in the parking lot, when Chip and I were getting out of the car, gave us a gift card for $63. That's the money coming from the MSBA. The MSBA is willing to commit $165 million to building in Fall River. I come from a very large family. There were 11 Coogan children, and we all graduated from Durfee, just like Chip. And most of us have been pretty successful. And then I was given the opportunity to go to work at Durfee for a very long time. And I loved being there, and I loved the kids you sent me. But we really need a new building. We don't need a new school, we need a new building. I am asking all voters to support the city of Fall River and the students and families of the Fall River Public Schools Let's give them a safe, secure, technologically advanced Durfee they deserve. Confucius said, to see what is right and not do it is a lack of courage. I'm asking the voters in Fall River tonight to so show some courage and vote yes on March 6th. Let's get this new Durfee built and let's move this city forward. And again, I wanna thank the Herald News, Bristol Community College, and my friendship for joining me here tonight and having this freewheeling discussion. I really appreciate the time you gave us. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Well, thanks again to Bob Kamara and Paul Coogan for joining me tonight, to Fall River Community Media for co-hosting and broadcasting tonight's forum. That's Look for replays on FRC Media, as well as on-demand options on uh, their website and heraldnews.com. And uh, please go out and vote on March 6th.